Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so it's a great pleasure to have Joel Naglu from the Graduate Center at the City University of New York and the Bronx Community College. And Joel will be talking about the Axe, Lindemann and Weistra's theorem for Fuchsian automorphic functions. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the invitation to speak. It's a great pleasure. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, so uh, the aim of his talk is to somehow discuss uh, recent work on the André Pink conjecture and the axinemann weierstrass theorem for curves. So I'll, I'll spend some time discussing what they are and uh, then I'll try to explain how um, one can use the, the, the study on the structure of a set of solutions of algebraic differential equation to tackle these problems. And uh, I'll try and give a brief overview of um, how uh, the multi-theoretic and differential algebraic techniques um, are used and so somehow give powerful tools to, to answer some of those questions. And uh, this is joint work with uh, Guy Casal and James Freitag. All right, so, um, so, Let's start with the underpin conjecture. So this is so number theory seminar. So I thought I'll spend some time to start with with somehow a problem in unlikely intersection, uh, and then uh, go to the Axinderman and Weierstrass theorem. So quickly, the underpin conjecture uh, predicts that uh, a sub variety of a Shimura variety, which has a dense intersection with a Hecke orbit, is weakly special. Okay, so I just wanted to state the uh, a sort of a quick uh, summary of what it is, but what I'll do is I'll try and spend some time to give the precise statement for Shimura curves. Uh, but the way we work with differential equation, it it uh, it's not it makes a little difference, uh, and we can work with more generally with uh, any hyperbolic curve. Um, so I also say we focus on the genus zero case, um, but now we know that ev almost everything that I'll, uh, what I'll say here can be adapted to the non-genus non zero case. But for simplicity, I'll simply talk about the genus zero case. So what are the basic assumptions? Well, I start with a discrete subgroup of PSL2R, so Fuchsian group, and I assume that it's a first kind and genus zero which basically means that when I take the quotient, uh, I can compactify and uh, obtain a compact Riemann surface, which is of genus zero. So, or a projective non-singular curve, if you like. Uh, but so what's important for us is um, we take throughout J gamma, will denote uh, a uniformizing function. So one of a generator of uh, the function field of that curve, okay? And it's known that uh, by the way we'll, we've constructed things that it's an automorphic function for gamma, okay? And the, I guess the most well-known example of that is when gamma is PSL to Z and when J gamma is taken to be the classical J invariant, okay? Uh, now, let me make some observation about this setting. And somehow, uh, the first is uh, related to the um, entropy conjecture. It's what, what do we mean by AK orbit? Okay. So, what's known is that if you take any G from the commensurator of gamma, you're not assuming gamma is uh, arithmetic. Necessarily. No, so yeah, no, so so yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, if gamma is arithmetic, I'm in the setting of Shimura curves, uh, but I somehow allow for any quotient by any gamma. That the commensurate is, could be very small, in fact. Yeah, could be very small, absolutely. And so, of course, in 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 problems like Andrew Pink conjecture, the the most interesting part is when gamma is arithmetic. 
And so, yeah, so if you have a, an element of a commensurator, then what you have is a polynomial that uh, vanish on J gamma T and J gamma G T, okay? And so we call these polynomials gamma special and or some people call them AK correspondence, but because it depends on gamma, so we call it gamma special polynomial. And again, the, I guess the well-known example is the modular polynomial in the case when gamma is PSL to Z. Now, as I said, I will focus, well, the, the technique we use, um, oh, so before that, let me just mention to go to what um, uh, was mentioned already is that uh, one can use uh, the gamma special polynomial to give a characterization of arithmeticity. And as to a deep result of Margulis is that uh, gamma is arithmetic, so the quotient Shimura curve, if and only if uh, gamma has infinite index in the commensurator, uh, so that there are infinitely many gamma special polynomials. Okay. And so, by the way, if at any point you have any questions, please feel free to stop me and I'm happy to, to answer them. And so, as I said, for our setting, what's going to be important is that uh, J gamma satisfy a third order differential equation of Swartzian type. And so here, this is the Swartzian derivative. So Y prime prime over Y prime. So it stops. So it's a third order differential equation. And so where the rj here is a rational function with complex coefficient. And it depends on your choice of the uniformizer. Okay, so throughout uh, this talk, I will denote by uh, del gamma d by dt, uh, this operator, so somehow uh, uh, that uh, you see here, so that this third order differential operator. So let me say a few things about uh, the Swartzian derivative again, because all of this is very important to my, my approach to those problem. Uh, and then we'll state the um, uh, Andre Big conjecture. So, so through, throughout when I talk about function here is I'm gonna talk about meromorphic function on some domain in the upper half plane. And so if I take two of those, then what's special with the Swartzian derivative is that if they agree, uh, if you apply the Swartzian derivative and it agrees on the two, then it's equivalent to the fact that F and G are related by an element of PSL to C uh, and the action is linear fractional transformation. Okay. And so also it's well known that uh, there's a nice formula for uh, the Swartzian derivative on uh, composition. So let me just write it quickly. Um, not that it's important, but if some of you want to work out the details of some of the things that, that I'm going to say, uh, at least you know where it comes from. So the Swartzian derivative, it's not exactly um, uh, a derivative, but it has uh, somehow nice properties. And what that tells us is it tells us, for example, if you use those two uh, uh, properties that are listed there, we know that uh, when you look at del uh, gamma d by dt and you apply it to j gamma t, you get zero. So this, this is the equation for j gamma dt, but you, you might want to know what about any other solution of the equation with zero, okay? 
Well, it turns out because you have this, uh, uh, these two properties that we've given here that any other solution will be of the form a translate by an element of, let's say, PSL2, or let's say PSL2R. Okay, so somehow um, th there's quite a few symmetry with this uh, uh, equation. And so you could try to push things a little bit further. So if instead you take an element, uh, you take a meromorphic function uh, from, let's say, that takes D to H, and then you want to apply J uh, gamma to that. So it's, it's a well-defined meromorphic function. Uh, you might want to know what happened if you apply this operator to, to this uh, function. So if you apply the operator, well, again, it's, it's not gonna be some random uh, LMF function you're gonna get. This AS is not a random function. It's gonna be uh, the Swadzian uh, applied to the function A. Okay, so there's somehow uh, quite a few symmetries that's gonna play a role and sometimes it's behind the scene. So it's good to know. And, uh, and just like I said, so you, you might finally, you might want to, do, to know what happened if I want to look at other potential solutions to the same equation where instead of zero, now I have AS. Well, for the same reason has it was the case up there, it's gonna be just translate or uh, action by some element G of PSL to R. So somehow uh, these are somehow quite technical, but it's somehow important to know that J gamma here uh, is a uniformizer and this is a uniformizing equation. So it really controls the two controls uh, solutions to, to, to this equation. Okay, so this is a little bit of uh, uh, information about the differential equation we, we are uh, looking at. But let's look at uh, back to the underpin conjecture. So what do we mean by Hecke orbit? So if I pick an element of a complex number and I wanna look at the Hecke orbit H gamma of A, then it's gonna be all the collections B such that uh, A and B are related by a gamma special polynomial, okay? So there's an equivalent way to say that as in terms of the J gamma. So if you have A tilt and B tilt, which uh, when you apply J gamma gives you NB, then it's related by an element of a commensurator. So that's how we define the gamma special polynomial. And so if I take a tuple of elements from um, and a tuple of complex number, uh, then by the Hecke orbit of that tuple, I simply mean the, uh, the product of the orbits, okay? So this is Hecke orbit. Uh, next, I need to define my weekly special subvarieties. So let's first de define what a, a gamma A special polynomial is. Well, it's either a polynomial that single out an element of- uh, 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 If yeah. we were SL2Z or PSL2Z- Right. Probably a situation, uh, would this be the, uh, would these be, in that case, what are we? What's this conjecture of this? Is it the Andre Ort or for no, no, it's it's a special. So somehow it's because you are only going to focus on one orbit of uh, uh, some points. Ah, right. so this is uh, okay, and so this is why you can deal with gammas which might have very few heck operators. Right, right, okay. and so and so somehow. Uh, yeah, so that's why everywhere we're gonna say gamma A special. So you 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 take a tuple of element and you focus on how the um, how the um, 
what the orbit of that um, particular area. Okay. okay. And so, so for weekly special polynomials, are either going to be uh, polynomials um, single out an element of the uh, AK orbit of uh, AI, or it's going to be actually a gamma special polynomial in the right coordinate. coordinate. Okay, and then from that, oops, you can define what are, so what that would be the weekly special subvariety. Um, so it's going to be, uh, 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 so it's going to be gamma special, gamma a special if it is given by finite conjunction of um, these kinds of special polynomials. And so one note is by construction, the way we've built things that if you have a gamma a special polynomial, uh, sub gamma a special variety, then it will follow that it has a Zarsky dense set of point of the orbit. And so what the Andre Pink conjecture is, is that the converse also holds, okay? So if you fix a complex algebraic variety and you fix a N tuple for any N, then you look at the Zarsky closure of the intersection of the variety with the Hecke orbit, it's gonna be a finite union of gamma A special varieties. Okay, so, um, so. So in your second condition, when you say P X bar is gamma special X I X J, what do you mean? So it means it's gonna be, so if, if I can go back quickly, uh, you remember, uh, we have these. Yeah, I know that. Right. So, but now you have more than two variables. Right, so it's gonna be just a polynomial in the two, two variables. Oh, you fix yeah. other polynomials, write down these other polynomials. Right, so it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be given on so some- for each, for each x1 to, I mean, xn, but not equal to ij, this will right. be right. xij. Okay, special, right. okay. Right. And so this is uh, what the uh, Andre Pink conjecture is. And, and, and I guess uh, if, if you think about uh, modular polynomial, uh, you are talking about, uh, so modular curves, um, so the, the, the gamma special polynomials are uh, the, the, so the, the variety you, are, you get are modular curves. And you, so you're talking about uh, these kinds of uh, uh, curves, uh, these kind of varieties here, okay? So is this, does the statement, uh, is the statement okay? All right. Um, Can I ask, uh, is this, uh, is this related to the Zilber pink? Is it stronger than the Zilber pink? Or? No, no, it's it's uh, it's weaker. Uh -huh. Right. So somehow, um, so so you see, um, one thing we are, as I say, one thing we are focused on here is the intersection with uh, one orbit uh, of a tuple of points. Right, and so uh, so more generally, you could look at intersection with uh, so not just orbit. You could look at intersection with uh, so the notion of weakly special or special variety, and then we take the Zariski closure. But here you focus in on if you take the intersection with a Hecke orbit uh, of a, uh, a tuple, right? And so. What we are able to, we are not able to answer the whole question, uh, but what we are able to show is the a transcendental version of that, by which I mean, if you further add that the AIs are transcendental, not necessarily algebraic independent, but they are not algebraic numbers, then we are able to show the underpin conjecture. Okay, and so few comments is 
actually I like, we can do a little bit better. We can allow at most one of the AI to be uh, algebraic, which is okay. Uh, but we also interestingly gives an effective solution to the problem. So we know that uh, the, the Zariski closure of intersection is gonna be a finite union of special variety. We are able to bound the, the sum of the degrees of the varieties in the union. And um, for curves, this was only known in the case of PSL to Z uh, in the work of Wright, Dag, and Scanlon. Uh, and so outside the context of uh, uh, curves, there's also been work, uh, uh, especially around uh, uh, moduli space of abelian varieties. Okay, but again, we are focused mainly on, on curves. So uh, what I really wanna do is to try and explain how can differential algebra, so we're talking about the number theoretic kind of problem here. So how does model theory come about and, uh, sorry, differential algebra and model theory come about and why does the uh, AI's not being algebraic matter? Well, so let's look at how one would give a differential algebraic proof of, proof of that, okay? So let me denote by curly C here, um, the algebraic closure of the field generated by the tuple A, but also we've, and all the coefficients of my rational function for the differential equation, okay? So then because I've chosen, because in C there are transcendental elements, I can define a derivation on C, so an additive homomorphism, homomorphism that satisfy Leibniz rule, so that the constant, field of constant, so all the elements that vanish on this derivation is uh, the algebraic numbers, okay? So in some ways, my, especially my tuple, the one I care about, are non-constant for that derivation. Okay, and so this is, if you've seen proof uh, around function fields argument before, this is a typical uh, argument. And so just to, to briefly recall, I know I've written that a lot. So uh, what we've seen is that this is the equation for J gamma, but what, what we were thinking, we were thinking of AI as, oh, there should be an I here, uh, as being a J gamma of a i tilt for some a i, okay? And so I, I can again think of applying that operator to uh, the a i. And so what I'm looking at is for each i, I'm gonna get an element of that C, which somehow uh, gives me uh, an equality of this form, okay? So if I apply the operator uh, del to AI, okay? I'm um, sorry, so you don't have uh, any assumption of independence between the different AIs, just that they are transcendent and that's it. So, yeah, so somehow when you, so when you, when you uh, define the derivation, you have to define it on a transcendence basis. And so you have, it's, it's uh, the natural there. So let, let me say maybe two seconds, uh, something about that two seconds. So, so you have, uh, let's say you have a transcendence basis, let's call it C1 to CM. And so you naturally have the derivations DCM. Uh, this is not, this is not, not these derivations. So what you'll do, you'll take a linear combination of this derivation, but you have to take a linear combination so that uh, it does not produce no algebraic relations between the CIs because they need to remain independent. independent. And so once you've done that, then 
all the relations are preserved because the transcendence base basis determine uh, the algebraic relations. So when in, in my, der my derivation here, preserve all the algebraic relations that potentially existed between my AIs and mm -hmm. don't create anything new. Okay, okay. So somehow the derivation is just shifting them around, well, right. changing their, right. yeah. But of course, what we see is that it, it, it gives differential algebraic relations. Okay, so now the AI is related to something in C, but not algebraically, not with polynomials, but including the derivation. Okay. Okay. And so what our strategy is then is to study this, these ODs. Okay, so, uh, uh, so somehow, um, uh, so that's what, so again, so this is the relation that holds. What we want to do is we study this, this um, uh, uh, differential equations. So let me explain why. But first, let me just say a little bit like um, minimality is somehow giving a tame topology for uh, real algebraic geometry. Uh, it's not enough to, by the way, this is why I, included the coefficients of the Rj's in my C, it's because this differential equation is defined with parameters coming from C. But just like in algebraic variety, you have a differential equation that define a very field. It does not mean that there are enough solutions of that equation in that field. So you might need to move to an algebraic closed field in the algebraic context to find solutions. And so, again, just like in for real algebraic geometry, uh, coming from model theory and also from work of Colchin, uh, there's a notion of differentially closed fields. And the definition is similar. So if you have a finite system of differential equation with coefficients in K, if that system has a solution in some field extension, then it already has one in K. Okay, so exactly how you would define algebraic closed field. And it somehow uh, works, except it's more complex, uh, but it gives you uh, somehow uh, uh, nice field extensions where you have enough solutions for your differential equations. And so let's define the solution sets of that differential equation we're interested in. So by the way, these are called differential algebraic varieties in analogy to algebraic varieties. So they are solution set in my differentially closed field of the equation. And so I call it H, uh, so I call it the differential KK uh, uh, variety. And the reason is, if, if you think about it, so we said that, uh, uh, so uh, we know that A, which is AI, which is J gamma of A tilde I is a solution. But if you remember what I said before is that any other solution will just be uh, an action of G from GL, PSL to R of that. So any other solution is of the form J gamma G of AI. And what that means is that in particular, if G is in commensurator of gamma, then it's gonna be also a, a, a solution. And so by construction, uh, my uh, AK orbit of the AI sits naturally in that uh, differential AK uh, variety, if you want differential AK orbit, okay? And so as I did with uh, the AK orbit, I define uh, the orbit, the differential orbit on uh, tuple to be the product of these. And what I have is uh, that 
the Heike orbit na naturally sits in uh, the differential variety. Okay. And so we can hence somehow embed in loosely use here our problem of looking at the intersection of the AK orbit sits naturally in the intersection of a differential uh, variety with V. And from differential algebra, this is what we call uh, finding, so studying the algebraic relations between solution of differential equations. Okay, so it's a more general problem. So somehow we were looking at, uh, so uh, AK Hobbit, and we moved to a, a differential variety. So we're looking at algebraic relations between solutions of differential equations. And what it, it turns out to be is that uh, in from the multi-area differential algebra, we have tools to actually tackle this seemingly more difficult questions. Okay, so I'll, I'll finish the argument um, later on when I will look a little bit more about this question of studying algebraic relations between solutions. Um, any, do I have any questions or is it okay? Maybe at some point you'd give us an example of a gamma, which is not SL2Z, maybe like a Hecker triangle group, which is non-arithmetic. Is, would, would, uh, is there some interesting kind of application like that? Um, so somehow, um, so, I mean, we, we have examples of those, but in terms of, so you, you want, uh, which is not arithmetic in particular, right? Well, because you've set it up that way. And it's not that, uh, it's just that uh, it seems like you're saying something quite exotic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, so let me state, uh, let me go to the next, which is the axin demand via stress theorem. Okay, all right. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll explain what it means for, for uh, th this setting, which is a, a little bit more natural for differential equation. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, so uh, as I was saying, so what we see here is simply a special case of a more general question, which one can think of as uh, an, an ax in demand vice trust theorem. So let me just explain what the setup is and show you how it's related. So this time uh, I'm gonna take, uh, again, V is gonna be an, an irreducible algebraic variety defined over C and so I'm going to take n uh, functions from the function field of V, and I'm going to assume that they have a point in common to H. And that's because I'm going to apply J gamma to the VIs. Okay. So now a notion coming from uh, uh, so the study of uh, Shimura varieties is. Shimura curve actually is the geodesic independent. And again, it's the same thing we've talked about before. So the VIs are called geo, geodes, gamma geodesically independent if they are non-constant and there are no relations of the form uh, VI equals GVI from a, an element of a commensurator. Okay, and again, the idea here is if such a relation exists, then I can look at JVI and JVJ. I got a complaint here. Why geodesic? Where did that come from? <laughs> so this is related to uh, related to how they say one says that weekly special subvarieties are totally ge geodesic. Oh, and that, I see. in terms of and and so some and and uh, I think that was Moonen who who introduced that notion. Uh, but you don't ever bring in hyperbolic geometry or anything, right? No, so, no, no. Uh, and so, yeah, so if this, uh, a relation like that existed, 
then they are related by the commensurator. So automatically, there's a gamma special polynomial that vanishes on the two points. Okay, so that's by definition. And so what the axiom the Mann-Weierstrass theorem says is that if you, if you don't include those relations, then what happened? Well, uh, then you have algebraic independence. So if the VIs are gamma geodesically independent, then if you look at the functions, the three N functions, J gamma V1 and its derivative, J gamma, J gamma Vn and its derivative, then they are all algebraically independent over C, okay? And so, uh, so this is um, a lot stronger than, uh, it's related, but a lot stronger on, on, on the kind of question we were looking at before. And let me quickly pause and say that uh, when gamma is arithmetic, uh, there's non-trivial intersections with work of uh, pillar for the J functions, the J function where he literally prove the same theorem. Uh, and then uh, the other pillar to the man, Umo Yafayev, Klinger, Umo Yafayev, but uh, in most cases done for without derivatives. Uh, so somehow uh, in the way our work uh, is to do the arithmetic, non-arithmetic and derivative all at once, okay? Uh, and I, I, it's, not a, it's not a proof, but how would you start a proof uh, is again, let's, for simplicity, let's assume that the VI is a, VI is a transcendence basis. Same thing as before, you have derivations with respect to these VIs, take an appropriate linear combinations of a VI, you obtain a derivation on the function field. But now again, the, the JVI satisfy what one, what we call this a fiber of a Swartzian equation. So it's satisfying one of those fiber equations. And so the axiom the man weierstrass theorem is in a, in a way the problem trying to fully understand the algebraic uh, relations between solutions and derivative, okay? So, uh, and so the Andre Pink conjecture in some way is just a, in the case we prove is just a particular uh, version of that. Um, and, and as I said, and, and especially because we are also focusing on the derivatives. All right, so, so this is um, how differential algebra how studying algebraic solutions of, of differential equation comes into play. What I, as I said, what I wanted to do also is to bring in a little bit the contributions of model theory. Okay, so I, it's well known now, I guess, in, in, in problem of functional transcendence and of problem of unlikely intersection that O minimality has a key role to play. And so the idea here is to speak about a different uh, if you want contribution of model theory, this time is for study of differential equations. Uh, so again, so I fixed the differentially closed field of characteristic zero and that will act as a universal domain in the sense of they, meaning that when I think of a field, a point, when I think of solution sets, varieties, all I'm thinking of, they are all living in mu or a Cartesian power of u. Uh, and so given a system of algebraic differential equation, what we say we wanted to know is look at the solutions and the derivative and figure out algebraic dependencies if exist between them. So in a way is to characterize whether there are any algebra algebraic structure. And now this is not a crazy question in a way. For example, the constants, so by the way, I use uh, prime for applying the derivation as well, that's common. Uh, 
So we know that, so the field of constant is an algebraically closed field. So it has a structure of algebraically closed fields, so very rich. We also know, for example, that uh, the, the uh, Weierstrass equation here allows us to give the structure of an algebraic group uh, to this guy. So there's a group structure there, okay? And so now this would seem an impossible question to try and characterize all differential equation and the structure of all of it. But one contribution of model theory is to um, explain that uh, there's a notion of one dimensional differential equation. And what that does, it, it somehow, it's a basis upon which you build all other structure. So to, to fully understand the structure of any differential equation, you have to figure out the structure of the uh, one dimensional differential equations. And so let me explain what do I mean by one dimensional. And before I do that, let me just fix a few things. So, because we try to keep in the concrete setting we are in. So I'm gonna assume that, oops, not you, but the field of constant of you is the complex number. And I'm gonna assume that I have an element of U called T, which is uh, act, um, as my uh, independent variable. So when I do that, I'm pretty much assuming that, uh, so partial here can be think thought of as D by DT, okay? And so um, K, for simplicity will denote in my notation will denote either the field C or C of D. So why am I doing that? Uh, so I'm, again, I, ke I keep leaving some uh, being uh, very, try to keep some simplicity. I'm only gonna focus in this talk on equation that looks like that. So order N, but uh, degree one in its highest order, okay? So if you think about our Swazian equation, it's, uh, you can clear denominator and write it in this form, okay? And so why do I want K to be C or C of T? Again, so the differential equation we usually care about are those that have either complex, complex parameters or, or have uh, the dependent variable, independent variable uh, hanging around somewhere. So I take the solution set in U. So, I say that this solution set is strongly minimal if for any differential field extension uh, and any solution, uh, the transcendence degree of the field generated by Y and the derivative up to N minus one is zero, okay? So this is a strong form of saying that the differential equation, no solution of a differential equation satisfy a lower order equation, even if I change the base field. So this is the non-trivial uh, non uh, condition here. So that, so for example, so uh, I like to show this example to, uh, so this is a simple exa example that looks like uh, the equation we have there. So you may wonder is, does it, does, do the solution satisfy no lower order equation? Well, you look at it, maybe you think no, but, but you see if you allow to add log T in your base field. So here my base field was C of T, but now if I, I'm allowed to add log T to my base field, this is a well-defined equation where I extend my base field. And now, uh, if I differentiate it one more time, I get the, the other equation, which means every solution of this one is a solution of that one. So this fails because it can be zero, one, or two, okay? And so now it, it's not obvious until you try to prove that differential equations are strongly minimal, but this condition that you are allowed to add in all kinds of function on your base, in your base field 
to define your equation, you try to show that there are no lower order equation, it's highly non-trivial. Okay. Uh, so, for example, another nice example is I like to write is this is Penlevé equation. Uh, if you spend few hours on it, you will literally know that you you will you would have seen that the equation. Uh, so I think this. Uh, if you if you differentiate one more time, you would end up getting the other one, okay? But you see, this is this was easy to find because you only had to look where the coefficient is uh, t or c, okay? So it's harder when you have to add any any functions, okay? And so, as I said, they are the basis. If you know how to determine the structure, you know how to do the structure or everything. And so the goal since the early 90s has been to classify all strongly minimal differential equation. And there's a natural equivalence relation on them. And that's called non-orthogonality, which simply means so two strongly minimal sets are non-orthogonal equivalent. If you have a differential rational function that defines a relation between the two, and which is uh, finite to finite. So each pro called projection is a finite to one function, okay? Uh, there's another way to define strongly minimal set where it's easy to see that this is the right notion of equivalence. But in any, any case, so let me speed up a little bit. Uh, the big theorem of the uh, early 90s was the theorem of Yushevsky Skolovich that showed that uh, same, same assumption, if it's strongly minimal, then it can only be of three kinds. Either it's gonna be field-like, so it's gonna be non-orthogonal to the field of constant. So here it forces N to be one, or it's gonna be non-orthogonal to a very special differential subgroup. It's gonna be a subgroup of a simple abelian variety of C trace zero. So now for those who might have come across the Manning homomorphism. Uh, Sorry, you never gave us an example of a strongly. Uh, right, so I mean. Uh, so yeah, you're the, classifying them already, but you, you gave us examples of non Strong. Right, so so just to say, so the whole game is always to try and show that the equations are strongly minimal. So that's what I'm I'm going to try to do. But I give you a simple one. Is uh, it's not simple. It's very difficult to show. Uh, so this um, is Penlevé first equation. So before you said Penlevé. I don't know which pain of it was, but uh, did not was not strongly minimal. So the other pen of it, this is pen of it two, was not strong minimal. So this is uh, so that one uh, I think I have it here is y pi prime is two y cube plus two y plus half. Okay, so it depends on which pen of it is. Okay. Right, right, exactly, and indeed, so the the work um, of the Japanese school Umemura Watanabe was to fully classify the equations that are strongly minimal. Penlevé. Oh. Uh, Penlevé conjectured, but he never was able to prove that they were strongly minimal. And so, uh, but this is the work of- uh, This is a much stronger condition than uh, the work of- Right. Uh, that I like of, uh, what's his name? Um, Matsako and- uh, Motoko, uh, which is pain lave, which are algebraic functions. Algebraic, yeah. Is, exactly. That's a different game, yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. And so, for example, this is strongly minimal. All you have to do is believe me that it is. It's not going to be very easy to show. Uh, and the last case is uh, geometric trivial. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. But just to say that, except for the last case, this actually answered the question so we gave a full classification, okay? And so what remains in the area is to fully classify that. 
And this is really what we are concerned about. And let me also mention that um, the, the machinery in, in the proof of this is what was behind uh, Rushovsky's proof of the function field mold and line. So if you look at uh, the second case here, which is about abelian variety, um, it played a heavy role in his proof for characteristic, characteristic zero. Uh, so he's reproofing characteristic zero, but then uh, ideas for his proof in characteristic B. For us who aren't uh, model theorists, so in, in the ominomality, some of us have got a little familiarity because mm -hmm. it's useful to direct problems. Uh, what are the tools? So you're saying you're using model theory, sort of what's kind of, what are so, the tools? Right. So somehow uh, here we're talking about, it's called geometric stability theory. So that's, so a minimality is, is um, somehow they, they, in some ways they are opposite to each other. So um, the, it's geometric stability theory. And so somehow, um, um, again, so I, I haven't set up things in such a way that I could explain what that is, uh, but I'm happy if, if anyone wants at some other point to talk about it. But the, the key thing is that the, the theory of, of the field U, the differentially closed field U, is somehow very nice and it allows for a, a definition of dimension uh, that, that sort of mimics uh, transcendence degree. And so using this, this uh, dimension theory that you get from the theory, uh, you are able to, uh, for example, uh, do such classification. Yeah. So I know I'm, I'm being a, a bit vague, but I didn't set things and up. Example, that. as you can see, I like examples. The example of Payne Lave uses this fancy machinery to prove the, that it's uh, um, strongly minimal. So, no, so you see, so here, if you assume it's strongly minimal, you have to assume that it's strong, strong, strongly minimal, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is kind of classification, right? Right. So, so, so this was, uh, in a way, the work in my thesis was to use. So the the Umemura and Watanabe did show that the Penev equation was strongly minimal, but they didn't know about the the classification here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I used it to 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 classify the Penev equation according to this. And it turns out that except for Penev six, uh, all of them are in this category. Uh, right. So, the, so Penev six is the only one which has a serious monodromy, right? Right, and, and as you, you uh, probably know, you can write using the Legendre, uh, 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 apply the Legendre operator to the uh, incomplete integral, you get the Manning map, which is what, what is here. But let me quickly say what geometric triviality is. And so that you all see that it's related to functional transcendence. So assume again, you have a strong minimal differential equation. Now it's trivial if, if you take distinct solution of the equation. And now what you're trying to do, you're trying to understand what happened if there's an algebraic relations between the solution, but also you add the derivations. Then triviality means that you will find a pair of solution where you would get the relation. So another way to say it is if you can show that there are no algebraic relations between pair of solutions, then you can conclude that there are no algebraic relations at all. And so somehow, um, if you think about what we're trying to do with the J function, this is exactly uh, very closely related because we are taking N solutions and we're trying to understand algebraic relations and we wanna boil it down to the gamma special polynomial. So between pairs, triviality does not give you that, but it gives you closely 
except you have a derivation. So this is like the power of a trichotomy theorem. And so- Is this something specific? Sorry, sorry, Joel. Is this a yeah. uh, description of uh, geometric triviality? Some, because it looks quite different from our, you know, our situation well, for our theories and the, so for so, so the closed fields, how, I mean, how do you get to this uh, you, uh, so form of geometric triviality? You say that, uh, sorry, that's a quick model theory note. So you say that, right? Sure. And yeah. so if if you have that uh, if you have that A is in in ACLA, it would mean that A is in ACL of one one of them. Okay. And so the, it's between pairs. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah. And and so I've already said that it's important for functional transcendence, but let me quickly just say that. The trichotomy is so powerful that you can also conclude something very, very strong and which is very useful for us, is that if you, from the very beginning, assume that your, your equation is autonomous, then automatically triviality is gonna hold. If it's strongly minimal, triviality is gonna hold. And so if you think about what we are trying to do, we, we are taking the Swartzian equation, which is autonomous equation, and we're trying to boil down algebraic relations between so, uh, solutions and derivation. We're trying to boil it down to pairs. Then we, we win a lot if we are able to show that it's strongly minimal. Because if we show that, show that the Swartzian is strongly minimal, then we get that it's trivial. And so this is exactly uh, what we aim. We aim to show that it, the equation uh, del, what we were looking before, is strongly minimal. Okay, and so, so that's what I was saying. Uh, let me just say that uh, Penlevé did conjecture that uh, the Swartzian equation for the automorphic functions would be he called it irreducible, uh, but he, he had already conjectured that. Okay. And so that's exactly what we proved in the end. So we proved that um, the conjecture is true for uh, the Swartian equation J gamma. So it's strongly minimal. I can't say nothing about the proof because uh, that would take a whole talk in itself. And hence, it's trivial, okay? So we reduce algebraic relations between a lot of the solutions and, and derivation to pairs. And then it involves doing some more computation to see that, uh, let me quickly just put it there, that um, indeed triviality didn't give us between just pair, but pairs and solution and derivation, but we are able to improve that and get down to polynomial. Okay, so if there are algebraic relations between uh, solutions and derivation, then it must be that a pair uh, produce uh, that algebraic relations. And let me, I'm running out of time, so let me just finish by saying, but notice that we can think of those solutions as uh, J gamma one, T, J gamma N T. And so what we are saying here is that you end up with a polynomial relations between these, but then a sort of well-known argument around uh, double coset and commensurator force the P to be gamma special, okay? So there's more to, to the story, but I'm gonna stop there because I've run out of time. Let's thank Joel for the wonderful talk. Please unmute yourselves and clap. Any questions? Well, there's so much information there that I don't know that it's, uh, I'd love to learn. Um, but where are you using the group uh, that, uh, that is finite volume quotient or which I think you are, uh, 
I mean, you say Pen Lave conjectured this kind of thing for gamma, for, for Schwarzian functions for gamma discrete subgroups of SL2R, exactly that? Right. So somehow, so he, he, he was called back then Fuchsian functions. Okay, Fuchsian, yeah. And okay. so somehow, it, it, so, and, and that's the, the, the key point um, in our approach, if you want, uh, is that it does not matter um, whether the, the, the commensurator is, the gamma is large in this commensurator or not. So when we do the proof, we can, we can uh, ignore that in, in our consideration. So we just go along with the proof. But if you want more details, it, 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 it occurs at this point, right? So at this point, you are able to make conclusions. You are able to say that, okay, if gamma is arithmetic, then what that means is you have a lot of algebraic relations. Mm -hmm. But if gamma is not arithmetic, then uh, they are finitely many. But if, if you, if you uh, go a little bit deeper, you can assume if gamma equals its commensurator, so if it's maximal. So this proposition is, is a consequence of your work. It's not a separate proposition. No, it's a consequence, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is a very impressive statement. <laughs> Yeah, that that I can understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. lovely. And so somehow, and so somehow, and so an example: if the commensurator is gamma, then you are able to say that there are no relations, yeah. relations at all, which is your generic situation. Yeah. Right. Can I ask, like, what do these extended uh, differential Hecker orbits look like? Like, how do they compare with the usual Hecker orbits? So, uh, so I mean, so it, it depends in, in what sense. In, in what sense are you asking in terms of? Uh, let's say, like, can you like maybe give an example, even in the classical Shimura case uh, or in the case of the modular so, so, curve? So you, you see, so somehow it, it's, it's not difficult to, to discuss what they are in the sense that uh, you know that, uh, behind the scene is that all equations are like that. So the, what the AK orbit of, so let's say this is A, this is gonna be everything that looks like this for that gamma in the commensurator. Okay. And if you look at the differential ones, it's going to be more. It's going to be everything that, uh, let's call it G for that matter. Let's say PSL2. Okay, so somehow the, the AK orbit only, only allows you to look at uh, action by the commensurator. Whereas uh, the solutions could be any, any other uh, actions of an element of uh -huh. uh, thanks. There's a question about the slides, so uh, maybe you can give the slides. Right, Abhishek, and he can provide it to absolutely. Yeah. Any... I, I so will. the talk is also being recorded and posted online, so yeah, you can also watch it later. Um, yeah. Also, like, uh, is there like a, an axe Shannuel statement? Uh, would that potentially lead to sort of another, uh, I don't know, something related to like a special point statement as well? So uh, let me just say, um, so um, Peter probably know that. So again, thanks to the IES. So we, it took, it's taking some time, but we are currently writing an Axe Channel version of all of that. Uh, we expect it to be out hopefully by the end of January. Uh, Nice. So where we do for curves the full channel, but then uh, for other streamer varieties, we are able to do uh, a version of channel, but which is not precise. It's a we call it a differential channel. Uh -huh. uh, but when it comes to application to uh, special points, I think either we haven't thought about it yet, or um, 
Yes, I think we haven't really thought about trying to apply it to special form. Uh -huh. Also, there's work of like Martin Orr and also like many other people, I think, uh, for AG, they prove cases of the Andre Pink uh, right. conjecture. Right. Uh, I, I wonder if like you expect like similar methods from geometric stability to make the results effective. Uh, so again, they use P-Lawilki and O minimality. And so I'm, I'm guessing that's not effective in some way. And uh... Right, so I, I, I think so. I think... Um... Well, even the Schwarzian there is quite a serious thing, right? Right. <laughs> what the Schwarzian is for AG. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I, I, th I, th I think so. I think we are... Uh, so you see what the only difficulty you have is that in this setting, we have explicit differential equations. And what that makes it, it makes for some computation or some, it allows you to, for example, there's this idea of fiber, whereby, as I said, every solution is, uh, is either, it's, it's like that. So either there's a zero here or you have a, a, a non-zero fiber. Well, you only can do that if you have the specific form of the equation. And so we are working on, trying to find ways around this. And that would be the key. The key would be able to uh, abstract this idea of working with fiber equation. Uh -huh. I, I had a naive question about Penleve's conjecture. Mm -hmm. So on the slide where you had his, uh, his uh, paper, mm -hmm. lectures, I, is there an analog um, for Kleinian functions? So say you were looking at, you know, discrete subgroups of PSL2C. Mm -hmm. um, is, there an anal is there hope for some sort of an analog or? Yeah, I, I would think so. I would think so. Yeah. Did he conjecture it? Because I mean, they were around. The Kleinian functions were right. also, uh, well, I, I just Sorry, this is related to my question, what you used about the Fuchsian group. If you allow a group which is kind of infinite volume, yeah, and in SL2R, which would be similar to this question that Das is asking, then uh, you must be using some finite dimensionality of some spaces right. yeah. of meromorphic function. Some, some, otherwise it becomes heavy analysis rather than algebra. I don't know. So you see, so the, the G here is, straight from the fact that you have a genus zero curve. All right, you started with, yeah. All right, and so if you, if you don't have a genus zero curve, it, it's an algebraic function uh, instead. So if you have a non-zero and that, so built in the equation is the fact that you're working with curves mm -hmm. and with finite volumes, for example. Uh, but I mean, so, uh, uh, so are you aware whether, in the case of Klein function, the differential equations are algebraic? I don't think so. <clears throat> so, if the differential equations are algebraic, then you expect to be able to ask the same question. And um, I think maybe in very special cases, uh, there's a nice book by uh, Jeremy Gray. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would look there. Right. Thank you. Amazing talk, by the way. Thanks. Oh, thank yeah. you. So if there are no further questions, uh, I guess, yeah, uh, please, uh, let's thank uh, Joel again.